Hello everyone and welcome to another International Leadership Week 2021 session powered by the Institute for Leadership and Management and sponsored by our special sponsors, Belbin and Edinburgh Business School. I'm Jay Luddit, Marketing Director at the Institute and in this session we'll be helping to inspire great leadership with the help from our special guest Ricardo Caranuca. Usually Ricardo would be calling calling in from Brazil, but today is actually live from Sweden. So we're very grateful to have you from Sweden today, Ricardo. Now, one of the greatest challenges as, of being a leader, as lots of us will know, is actually overcoming ourselves and some of our own challenges. Um, and today, Ricardo is going to be uh, helping us to think about how we can push ourselves forward as leaders, um, helping you to launch a new product, maybe change your career, or even end a disruptive relationship. So Ricardo is the founder of Outside Comfort Zone, and this is what he specializes in. So I think this is gonna be an interesting session. As usual, please submit your questions via the control panel at the side of your screen. Uh, we'll be answering as many as we can at the end, and we'll also jump over to the hub at institutelm.com to carry on the conversation there. Please also use the hashtag ILW21 if you'd like to join the conversation on social media. That's enough of that. Ricardo, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you for your introduction. And uh, it's a honor to be here. Thanks for the invitation. And uh, for you guys that are watching, I'm, I'm going to start imagining all your faces because I cannot see your face, but I imagine that, you know, it's only outstanding people out there. I'm sure about that. So my name is Ricardo Coanuca. Uh, Coanuca is always hard to say. Ricardo Coanuca. I'm from Brazil and I live in Sweden for 13 years. Nowadays I live between Brazil and Sweden. So here in Sweden I have a production company where we work with the video, video marketing, helping other companies to market it themselves. And also I work with uh, personal development and emotional intelligence. In Scandinavia, doing speeches and, and working with companies, helping them to cross the comfort zone, to go out of the comfort zone. So today, I'll be talking to you about comfort zone a little bit, but more, I want to talk to you about something that is what, what makes the new leader of the future? What makes the new leader of the future? So some of these days, I was uh, walking on the street and... I saw an old man walking and he had like a lot of difficulties to, to cross the street. So I saw that and I, when I was looking at him, he fell on the floor. And then I, I ran to grab his arm to help him to cross the street. And I helped him to cross the street. And when we achieved the other side of the street, I told the old man, you know, old man, you should be home. You should stay safe. And then he looked at me and then he said, I love to walk more than I'm afraid to fall. I love to walk then. I love to walk more than I'm afraid of falling. That's what he said to me. And then I got, you know, he gave me that answer and I started to think and then I asked him, but, but you're not afraid of dying. And then he said to me, Living means doing what I love to do. And if I have to fall one time, two times, three times, four times to do what I love to do, then it will be like that. You know, my friends, life, it's really unpredictable. Life, it's, it's ridiculous, unpredictable and short. We have no idea when we are leaving this earth, right? We don't know. That can be today, later. I'm sorry, but it's true. Or it can be in 10 years, 30 years. We have no idea. So not doing what you love, not choosing in favor of your dreams, it's actually the biggest problem we have in our old in our world right now. I was on Facebook one of these days, and I was scrolling to Facebook and Suddenly I got a message and in the message, one friend from Brazil told me, you know, Ricardo, uh, he remember our friend from school. We studied together. Suddenly 
something happened with him and he passed away. And nowadays, I still see his picture on Facebook. I still see his pictures there on Facebook, you know, in the friends column on the Facebook. I still see his face on the Facebook. And every day that I see him, every time I see him, that makes me remember that, oh my God, like he was here and he's not here anymore. And one day, one day it will be me. And one day, for sure, it will be you. And why I'm saying that, that makes me remember a quote from Steve Jobs that says, remembering that you're going to die is the best way to avoid the trap of you thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason to not follow your heart. So my friends, what, what this that I'm talking about has to do with leadership, what this has to do with the, the leader of the future. The leader of the future understands that the world needs a shift. We've been doing liderance from a perspective of thinking about the external, forgetting who are we internally? Who are we? What do I love to do? What do I want to do? When you discover that fire inside of yours that we all have, what's your why? Why? Why you want to do what you want to do? Or why you're just doing something and you don't even understand why you're doing it? The leader of the purpose, the, the leader of the future understand purpose. And purpose, many times it's misunderstood because sometimes we think that purpose, if you think about purpose, many times we think something that fluffy, you know, ah, this is too fluffy. What do you mean with purpose? Purpose, it's connected also with results. Purpose is also connected with money. You can make money and have a purpose. But the world is passing for a transition right now. And we need to understand that the leaders understand the power of purpose, the power of knowing who you are. So to make it more clear what I mean with purpose, I would like you to imagine a seed. Imagine that you have a seed of a mango tree. You know, in Brazil, we have a lot of mangoes, a lot of mangoes. It's like you see mangoes everywhere, you know, free mangoes, a lot of places. But when I come to Sweden, the mango is really expensive. The same mango, imagine. Okay, so imagine the mango seed. You see the mango seed, you look to the mango seed. When you look to the mango seed, you imagine that that seed can become a huge tree, right? That can become a huge tree and has the potential to become a huge tree. The seed has the potential, but Will it become the tree that will give seed to us? I don't know. I don't know. Only that seed, if that seed fulfill its full potential, that is to give us fruits. The full potential, if that seed fulfill its purpose, it will give us mangoes. So imagine we plant, we give water, we give energy, the plants start to grow and we have patience and the, 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 the mango trees start to grow become a giant and after a while it starts to give mangoes and we go there and grab the mangoes and eat the mangoes and make juice with the mango and make uh, cakes with the mangoes but the purpose of the mango tree is to give us fruits imagine the purpose of the mango trees is to serve us humans we go there and we get the seeds it's serving us so we, you that are listening, you are like a mango tree. You are like a seed. You have a seed inside of you that, that has a potential that you have no idea what it is. And that potential, it's like the mango tree. The potential of that seed, it will be fulfilled when you connect with who, who you really are and you are fulfilling your potential. You understand that you will, you will feel that you are fulfilling your potential because you will feel, it's a feeling. Right now, if you ask yourself, am I doing what I'm supposed to do? If you are doing what you're supposed to do, 
your answer will be straight. Yes, that's what I came to do in this earth. That's the road. I'm in the right path as a leader. But if your answer is like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I don't think I have anything nah, uh, uh, special to do. I'm just follow, following some, somebody else's rules. And I, I'm, I don't have a sense of, oh my God, this is who I am. That's the first step you need to start looking for, okay? That is the purpose that you are need in need to reconnect. You don't have to find a purpose. You have to reconnect because your purpose is not lost. You have a purpose inside of you. And that is the first step for the new leaders of the future. They understand that if they lead by their purpose, if they lead by the things they love to do, they will cause a lot of more, a, a, a lot of more, they will bring a lot of more great things to it. Nowadays, we have leaders that are completely out of their purpose. They're doing things that they even don't know why they're doing. They, they are choosing favor of fear. But when you choose purpose, you choose in favor of courage, of, of doing the things you love. I always say like, you know, if we had more leaders that were choosing favor, the things they love to do, we would be living in a much better world, in a much better world. We would have leaders that would destroy less the nature. If you are living in your purpose, you will not choose to destroy the nature. You will not choose to harm people. You will not choose to make bad choice for other humans. Why? Because the translation of purpose, it's service. We are here to serve. As Ma Mark Taiwan said, the two most important days of your life is the day you were born and the day you discover why you were born. So I want to tell you something. Uh, I wrote this book. That's the call it the No More Bullshit Stories. Okay. And in this book, uh, I help persons to understand a triad. That's this triad here. Okay. The triad, I don't know if you can see, but I can I can explain to you. The triad is called purpose action and consistency and with that you can achieve the life you desire okay so everything starts with purpose knowing who are you why why uh, why you do what you do you know Nietzsche Nietzsche has a quote that says if you know your why for living you can endure almost anyhow if you know your wife for living, you can endure almost anyhow. So the first step is purpose. After you are connected with your purpose, you need to start taking action. And when I say taking action, it's actually you need to go out of your comfort zone to make your dream, your reality, become the life you want. So you need to start taking action. To start taking action, you need to cross your comfort zone. And to cross the comfort zone, you need to understand what makes you stay in the comfort zone. And for that, you need to understand how your brain function. It's, uh, it's in our brain, DNA, DNA, uh, to, to be comfortable. We are always choosing favor of comfort, but comfort. After you understand how your brain works, then you can start moving, okay? And, and the other part of the triad, it's called consistency. Purpose, action, and consistency. What I mean with consistency, how many times have we started something and we stop? We say, you know, now I know, now I know the direction of my purpose. I, and then I start taking some action. And then I take action for one day, two days, four days, five days. And then suddenly I stop. And why you stop if it's something that you really love, if it's, if it's something that you really want? Why do we stop? We stop because we don't understand our emotions. The third part, consistency, is actually when you master your emotions. It's like when you take action anyway, even if you're not feeling like. It's when you're feeling afraid and you move forward. It's when you're feeling tired and you keep going forward. It's, it's what gives the result. It's the consistency. So first step, purpose. And I say that purpose without action 
it's hallucination. Purpose without action is hallucination. You need to first step, get, get your purpose, start taking action, and be consistency to create the life that you want. So leaders of the future understand the power of taking, the, the power of purpose. And this is something that I really believe. I really believe that, you know, guys, if you're making choices that are not aligned with who you are, it's a lot easier for you or for me to create damage in our planet. You know, your purpose is a gift to the world. Stop to think about that. Your purpose is a gift to the world. And now, now more than ever, the new leaders need to think about why you do what you do. Is, is what you do important, really important for others? And now, before we finish, I would like to, to, to share with you five ways that you, you will know now, okay? You will know now if you are aligned with your purpose or not. Is that okay? Can, I, can, can, can we do that now? Okay, so I'm going to share with you five statements and you will analyze which of these statements you are choosing in your life right now. And after that, you will see if you are in your life right now, living a life aligned with your purpose or you are, if you are completely out of your own purpose, okay? Okay, statement number one. If right now in your life, you make your choices based on courage and adventure, or you make your choices based on fear or security, okay? One another. Which, which one in your, which choices do you make? Are you making choices based on courage or security? Sorry, are you making your choices based on, on courage and adventure? Or are you making your choices based on fear and security? Choose one, choose one, okay. Statement number two, the best day for you is Friday night. You love Friday night. You're like, my God, it's Friday night. I'm, I'm going to party. I'm going to drink. I'm going to have fun. And the worst day of the week, it's Sunday for you because the other day you're going to start work. You picking this one or for you, it's like you forget the days. You're like, man, which, which day is today? I love every day. Which day is today? Which one you pick from these two? Okay, pick one. Statement number three. Number three. Do you feel pulled? Do, do you feel pushed to the work? Every morning you're like, oh my God, I have to go to the job. Oh shit, man. I'm gonna meet that boss. I'm gonna meet that, that, that those friends. If you feel like that, choose this one. And if you wake up every morning excited you know it's like you're pulling to to do the things you love you pull it to do to, to to go to your work which one of you which one you pick okay statement number four you are already thinking about retirement you are already thinking like oh my god when i retire i'm gonna move to brazil when i retire i'm gonna start painting when I retired, I'm going to finish my relationship. You know, when my husband die, I'm going to start doing the things I love. You picking this one or you pick this one. You, 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 you see no need to retirement. Actually, you think retirement is really stupid because if you love what you do, why should you retire? Warren Buffett is the first one that said that. It's like, why should I retire if I love to do what I love to do? Okay. Four statements. And last statement, last statement is success. If you think success, it's money and power. Only that, you know, you are, you pick this one. And if you think success is fulfillment, success is really relative. Success is fulfillment. Success is you being you the way you imagine. It's you creating your life in your own terms. That's success. And also, you can make money. And also, you can, you know, be, be wealthy. 
But that's not the focus. The focus is you being you, the way you are. It's fulfillment, okay? So I gave you five alternatives and I hope you get a picture of your own direction right now in life. Are you in the direction of your purpose? If your answers were not aligned with your purpose, I leave now my talk to my friend Jay here, but I would like you to think, think today and ask yourself, am I going in the direction I should go? Or should I shift to become a leader of myself? Thank you. Well, that was brilliant. Thank you so much for that, Ricardo. Um, lots of lots of energy to keep us on our toes for day two of International Leadership Week. Um, some really great takeaways there, actually. Um, I've made a few notes. I love the analogy of the mango seed um and the and the potential uh but i think also your point about understanding your purpose and then actually if even if you're not sure about your purpose you can still just have an idea of what it is and if it changes that's fine if you change your mind about it that's fine but to have an idea is 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 really crucial so i thought that was really really poignant um we, we do have some questions for you um you'll be you'll be pleased to know from our from our audience um so let's have a look here and see where we where we want to start um so someone's interested to know actually if you have could you illustrate an, an ideal example of a leader who is truly aligned to their purpose maybe okay. the, maybe there's someone out there yeah okay so you know this is my opinion i cannot i cannot be right because you know who that's my opinion i believe for example that uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, it's aligned with his purpose. He's a leader, right? In my opinion, he's aligned with his purpose. I believe that uh, Tony Robbins is aligned with his purpose. I really believe. And, and one thing I would like to say, that is that, you know, purpose doesn't need to be something huge, you know? Because sometimes we think of purpose about, oh, purpose need everybody need to be Gary Vaynerchuk. Everybody need to be Madre Teresa. No. Purpose is not about that. Purpose is not about that. Purpose, it's, it's really unique. It's really private, you know, and doesn't need to be something huge. And I, what I want to say is like, you know, th there, was, there was a guy, if, if I tell you that, you understand what I mean. There was a guy that one day made a video for his mom, okay? He was filming a video to his mom and he was telling to his mom, mom, you know, I'm sorry uh, you don't love me the way I am. I'm so sorry you don't love the way I am. You want me to be a lawyer. You know, he was saying the telephone. You want, you know, mom, you want me to be a lawyer, but I'm sorry if I disappointed you. But you know, mom, I feel so great when I'm here on the farm, planting, planting seeds, you know, knowing that I'm planting those seeds with so much love. And I don't even know the persons that are gonna eat those, those fruits. But for me to be here touching the earth, put me putting the seed with my hands, knowing that who eats this seed will get that energy, get love. That is purpose. And nobody knows this guy. Understand what I mean? So it's really, it's not about everybody becoming, it's small, it can be really small, you know? Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you, Ricardo. Um, what do you think about especially over the last couple of years we've obviously all over the world people have been spending a lot more time in isolation we've not been able to go and do the things that we've wanted to do do you think this idea of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and thinking about your purpose do you think that's been a lot more difficult for people during the last two years you know, you know I, I i don't think it's you know i don't think it's really di more difficult it's like it gives us more pain, let's say, but also also push us to actually decide. You know, you have to decide. There is no time to to not be you. There is no time to not do the things you love to do. And and if it's not now, if it open everything again, you go. We're going out there to the world, and we're gonna say. Oh, some, now something new is happening, and that's why it's making it difficult. 
we are always looking for something, you know, we, as I call, uh, we always, it's, uh, that's what I call bullshit stories. That's why I wrote my, my book called, you know, no more bullshit stories. It's because these are, you know, we always going to find excuses, you know, it's now the COVID, we are locked. Okay, cool. So let's wait a little bit. Let's open. Something else will happen, you know. That's that's yeah. what I you know. I'm, I'm I'm pleased you held the book up there again, actually, Ricardo, because a few people are asking what the name of the book was. So so thank you for that. Um, there's another question here, uh, which is about self awareness. Actually, um, would you say that self awareness is as important as a sense of purpose? For sure, for sure. Uh, self awareness is it's crucial because as i try to tell you you know if if, if you i tried when, in this example that i gave about the, the guy that was calling his mom and say mom you know what i love is is, is touch the, the earth and put the seeds that guy is really self aware he's not thinking like you know i should be gandhi i should be the best speaker of the world i should save the world he has so much self awareness and we can link self-awareness with self-knowledge. You know, he knows who he is. And if maybe his mom and all his friends thinks it's a small thing, but his self-awareness put him to have the courage to do that thing that maybe a lot of people would think it's a small thing. So self-awareness is crucial. You need to know self-awareness is like you knowing who you are, who you are. And don't that's what I'm saying. You know, some people were not made to to, to be Gandhi. You know, they were made to make something small, but it's really, really important for the whole. Our purpose is a gift to the world. So it's all purpose together that makes the difference. Yeah, that's a really, that's a really good way of looking at it. Even small things can make a big difference. Um, probably just time for one more uh, question, uh, Ricardo. Uh, related to the self-awareness piece, actually, um, I think, um, as, as leaders, one of the one of the tools that we use is is asking for other people's feedback to help us become more self-aware and aware of our leadership and characteristic traits. Um, do you think, um, back to the point on purpose, do you, do you think there's a way that you can work with other people to help kind of discover your purpose? Or do you think it's more of a, a personal thing that you kind of figure out just by yourself? You know, uh, I think that is... I, you know, there is a lot of person that being studying that, you know, that, that being the journey of self-discovery, for, for example, I always say that, you know, I, I, I reconnected with my purpose when I was 35 years old. So I know that from, from zero to 35, I was, I, I didn't have the certainty I have now, but it took me 35 years of searching of, you know, of studying, of, of asking help because I, I need help to get to the, the point of, I can say now with 43 years old, you know, I'm, I'm here now, but a lot of person helped me, you know, and that's what I'm saying, I do this today, nowadays, I help people on that. Why? Because I've been there, you know, I've been there. And, and as I say, a person that know how to do that for others, it's kind of like, you know, I can take you to places inside of you that you cannot go alone yet. It's kind of like we grab the hand of, of, of the client or the friend, grab the hand, do an internal trip and, and, and show, man, look here. And now go by yourself, you know. But, but we need help, self-development, you need help. You need people that know more than you to show you the way I needed that and that there was a lot of people that helped me. Yeah, it, it was interesting that you mentioned that you, you reconnected with your purpose as well. So this idea of maybe you find your purpose and then it drops off, but then you find it again. You think that's okay? That's normal? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's normal. I, I, say, I say we don't lose the, it's like the, your purpose not lost. It, it's, it's inside of you, but you're not accessing it. It's kind of like, you know, it's there. You know, if, I, if we start asking you specific questions and dig, you will see shit was always there. You know, maybe it was something that you're really, really passionate about to do when you were a kid, or maybe something that you have this dream that you don't tell anybody, but you wish you had the courage to do, you know, or even somebody that you feel jealous of, you know, that is a lot of jealous tells a lot about, about a uh, purpose. Cause sometimes we feel jealous 
about something that means it's telling something about us. It's like, shit, I should be doing that, that thing that this guy is doing. It, it, there is many ways to, to, to get to the point of reconnecting who with, with our purpose. Uh, Ricardo, I think that's a really, really powerful way to to end the webinar because we are out of time, uh, unfortunately, but that was super insightful and full of energy. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you to everyone else that's joined, uh, joined as well. Uh, it's a great way to, to wrap up day two of International Leadership Week. Uh, we're not even halfway through, so do go to the website institutelm.com and book yourself on to lots of other talks. We've got loads of other inspiring speakers, just like Ricardo, uh, to keep you entertained uh, right up until the end of Friday. Uh, so with that, um, I wish you a good rest of the day and uh, thank you again to Ricardo and we'll see you on the next session. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. I want to thank everybody that was here. Can I just say thank you to everybody? Uh, thank, thank you, all of you, for your time and getting to know you. And all of you, if you want, you can add me on LinkedIn, okay? My name is Ricardo Quanuca. You can go there, add me, and we're going to become friends, okay? I'll see you. Fantastic. Thank you, my friend.